Hi everyone, today is December 22nd, 2021, and we have today a last session of this year uh, of AMA, and uh, I'm so happy to see you today, and uh, that, that year was as much as difficult as actually exciting, and so we, uh, we had so many projects done in this year, very happy, and um, Hopefully that year uh, was treated good you too. And um, so more sessions we are doing like this, more, <laughs> more opportunities we have um, for, uh, for next ones and so more ideas we have. And so I, I hope then uh, to hear from you some, some ideas too, if you want to, uh, to hear uh, about our line of colors. And today we will talk about our yellow earth colors. And um, so I'm uh, assisted as always by George O'Hanlon. He will help uh, me to answer your questions. Like always, you, you ask the questions during the session. And uh, so um, we, we can start it. So we will start with uh, Blue Ridge Yellow Ochre and uh, this is our most APEG color, yellow color. Ochre color. Ochre yeah. color, yes. <laughs> and uh, so uh, because the particle size of this, uh, this specific uh, color is very small and uh, so therefore it's very smooth paste. And this ochre is uh, from the U.S., um, so it's from um, West Virginia area. There are uh, very old ochre deposits there that have been there for, and have been mined continuously for at least 100 years. So and like always, we will mix uh, our colors with uh, several colors. So we will start with lead white number one. This is most common, lead white. And um, I will try to mix 50-50. Um, uh, keep in mind, of course, it's all by eye. It's, uh, I'm not obviously measuring, so, but uh, we just wanted to show you difference between, uh, let's say, lead white, very uh, warm white, and uh, very cool white, but with uh, titanium white. And so uh, every color we will mix, so you will see the difference. So like I said, this is the smallest particle and um, based on mixture w when I was working with uh, every color, so that was the most smooth color. And uh, later, after when we finish video, I will show you swatches like always and uh, you will see then it's actually most glossy color too on the end because of the particle size. Ochre is a designation, not a rock, <clears throat> but actually uh, a pigment that is derived from, uh, from the earth and it contains iron oxide. So what we're showing here today, we say yellow earths, but we're, all, we're showing mostly ochres. We do have one that's technically not an ochre. And if you want to know more about what kind of rocks it comes from, principally, ochres come from the mineral getit which is not a rock, but a mineral. There's a distinction. Rocks contain many different minerals uh, as they're found in nature. 
So the names earth and ochre are suitable when it is clear that the pigment comes from a natural source. So uh, earth is a general term, ochre refers to a specific type of iron oxide. Lemon ochre, uh, probably uh, after blue ridge, uh, they, lemon and blue ridge yellow ochre go in neck to neck to each other. So, so they are most popular among the uh, yellow colors. The difference is, um, of course, blue ridge has the smallest particle. Lemon ochre has uh, the biggest particles. And you can see that behave, behaves already different. So it's kind of breaking up if you want to uh, create impasta with, uh, so that would be a uh, great color to, to do that. Where yeah. we blue, blue ridge yellow ochre kind of like melting out. You can actually see the texture in that, that yes. other video where this close up. Yes. Uh, and that's because of the size of the particles. Just wanted to mention when you see uh, two of them together like this, it's a um, and mass tone, they almost identical, but I assure you they are very different. And you can see, you see that uh, when you mix even with lead white, you see how uh, uh, lemon ochre is um, much more lighter in um, color. And so because the particle size, it's, uh, it makes this color much more transparent. Yeah, you can see here the differences in the tinting strength of lead white and titanium white. Quite different. Italian yellow earth. Uh, again, it's PY43, you see that. So they all three of them are the same uh, index, 43. Um, somehow, people don't pay attention much to this color, but it's very interesting one. And so uh, on the end of the program, uh, we will have special deal. And uh, so, uh, and that will be specifically about Italian yellow earth. And again, uh, we do want you to uh, experience that. This is probably most greenish one from all of them. And uh, probably the most greedy one. So it uh, uh, looks like the particle size are their biggest uh, than uh, even lemon ochre. It's not. It just has, obviously has different um, uh, mineral inside George, Yes. So because this is what makes that uh, greenish color. On although here on video it's not very visible, but um, you can see. You will see later on my swatches. Yeah, keep in mind too that um, uh, ochres typically contain clay, quartz, and other, uh, could also gypsum, things like that, that are naturally found in the earth where they're located. Yellow ochre light. Uh, <laughs> this color we usually use in our uh, classes and to show just what, you know, as a pigment, um, or how it's look like. And uh, when you mix with oil, it suddenly become very dark, although you see the name yellow ochre light. Uh, this is uh, most reddish color from all of them. And again, that was a um, uh, discovery for me because when you put all of them together, suddenly uh, you see the old difference. Yeah, uh, keep in mind, all of these oil colors mix with any oil medium. Um, Absolutely. So no problem there. This they're, is... they're really wonderful colors to use uh, for so many different applications, portraits, landscapes. You can see the subtlety of each of these colors. Uh, there are just slight differences, in, especially in tints, is where artists typically use them anyway. But what we would like to mention about, about uh, behavior, of course, and so yellow ochre light, very soft one. It's uh, very fluffy. It's almost, you can't even feel on the palette knife when you work with that. And like I said, it's uh, very reddish, which yeah. makes probably very nice um, and easy uh, flesh tone color. A lot of the transparency of these ochres comes from the fact that they contain various amounts of iron oxides and the iron oxide gives the actual color, but the other accessory minerals, like the clay, the quartz, and so forth, change or alter that color, but give it more transparent. You can see we're getting more and more transparent. Yeah. 
meaning uh, titanium is overpowering and so you see that yeah yellow ochre pale uh, it's one of the sour colors what we actually didn't follow the the rule and so we are making from our uh, from the pigment called uh, yellow ochre extra pale and uh, so uh, although you see here it's almost brown color uh, as a pigment it's I can assure you it's a uh, very it's uh, almost white uh, white <laughs> yes <laughs> and so um, again very interesting it's very fluffy and um, uh, it's what I would say like you see like here it's almost like brown but what I found from uh, from that video so if you want to tune down your white if it's too bright so that's what uh, yellow ochre pale will do so it's very easy um, but at least you know what, what it's mixed and so you know then it's very safe to to make that uh, buff titanium <laughs> You also notice that the consistency of these colors vary considerably. Some look a little, as one one of our commenters said, uh, why is one dry and the yellow ochre light looks uh, oily? Yeah. And that's because we don't put additives like all other companies do. And so what you're really seeing is the behavior of the pigment with the oil. Now you will see probably the most um interesting color it's called Vicenza Earth and um, so uh, if uh, we had people who bought that color and they absolutely didn't understand what the heck they bought and so and it's understandable because as a color it doesn't make any any sense because what you see right now absolutely brown color very yeah. transparent you can see then it's transparent but the moment you mix with any color so it's i i would think george it's how's that um to when you not even tune down when you just w want to shift the color a little bit yeah yeah it's, actually it's so transparent and so little tint strength as yes. you're going to see in just a second that rather than using it as a color yes. uh, as, as tanya was mentioning you can uh, modulate uh and very in a very sublime way um, any other other color with it. So you can see what it's doing to this white. It just warms up the white and um, instead of instead of overpowering anything. And that's because it's mostly clay. There's so little iron oxide in it to give it any kind of uh, color to it. But very useful color and there's uh, there's a whole article on it um, in on the website, Natural Pigments website. Italian dark ochre, and you can see here is a small separation. Uh, I, I'm sure George already uh, reading something why they behave different. So because again, we don't put any additives. And so some colors once in a while have this separation. And again, artists who use our colors years and years, years, they, they absolutely understand and experience that. And so um, Italian dark ochre is uh, in our yellow ochres line. So because it's definitely not a red color, uh, not even orange, uh, but definitely like when you, you see you put among the yellows, it's like Ooh, it's not yellow either. But so. Um, but it just, ochres, uh, of course, yeah. ochres vary in range yes. from yellow, red, brown. Yes. So, yeah. So that's why we decided to put here anyway for you. So, uh, and you will see that it's uh, completely, you know, the very strong tinting, and um, uh, definitely very reddish. Great One for, of the actually yeah very popular colors. So, uh, great for I, flesh tones. Yeah, I, yeah. Um, yeah, I should give that. So it's uh, yeah. uh, a lot of people buy that color. I think uh, like our orange ochre. It's like yes, red. yes. Uh, just for comparison, because many of you are accustomed to um, uh, synthetic uh, colors, and so then we decided to mix that with Mars yellow. So then you can see the difference. 
You see con a difference in consistency. You see how uh, it's very uh, stiff from the uh, from the uh, tube. So Mars yellow, of course, is an iron ox synthetic iron oxide. So this is a synthetic color, and it's almost pure iron oxide. Um, and you can see why. You can see how strong tinting it is, how very opaque it is, as compared to ochres. Less subtle nature, much more heavy, heavy footed. So of course it didn't make any difference on um, uh, lead white on that color. So it's not uh, much uh, changed the color at all. But look, uh, even titanium. When I will mix with titanium, even that didn't uh, tint color much. So I decided to make another pile and uh, put. Uh, actually extra titanium then to see uh, the color so then uh, at least you will see how it's uh, how strongly yes. tinting yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. so you could also see that the differences between lead white yes. and titanium titanium is cooler so it's going to cool the colors lead white's going to maintain the warmth of the color now of course we wanted to mix some kind of greens hopefully um, since it's not true, true yellow, how you are custom with synthetic um, um, modern colors, so the yellows will not be very, uh, not with all colors. You will see, um, and so we will mix with ultramarine red shade and uh, and Prussian blue. Uh, we don't have uh, one of one of our yeah. audience asked if we sell them in a kit. We don't have a kit, but we will have special deal. <laughs> we'll have a special deal if you buy any two of these uh, of these earth colors. We'll give the Italian yellow earth free. free. And again, it's uh, the reason why we are doing this because we do want you to try. It's uh, one of the actually very nice colors very useful but uh, not many people kind of pay attention to that mm -hmm. one yeah we have actually um well, i don't know maybe yeah. in our dry pigment line we probably have well over 20 yellow ochres uh but out of out yeah. of that group we've selected um you know, we've selected this group to make oil paint out of. Some of them very similar, so then that's why yeah. we don't touch in uh, in uh, oils. So you can see then, um, so you will see that uh, actually even more so than um, more uh, olive greens are made then um, with. Um, so I can, I have a note here: blue rich yellow ochre, Italian yellow earth, and Mars yellow make. Uh, with ultramarine make olive green Very so you can yeah, yeah you can't just you can't even um, mix it so to make the true green but with prussian blue is different story so uh, blue rich yellow ochre yellow ochre light and mars you actually can see the green color yeah, look how so, strong Prussian blue um, just overpowers yes, and, everything. Um, it's amazing. I, I should mention that it's not a 50-50. It's not even 10%. I just, you can see. I think it's a little it, dot. Yes, <laughs> I, I just try to, you know, tap, you see, like, okay, with ultramarine. Ultramarine, more. yeah, yeah. Uh, much more transparent, obviously. Yeah. But see, okay, I overpower here. Um, but um, with Prussian blue, I just didn't, okay, so I'm. Gonna add some back in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But also, yellow ochre light is very, very weak tinting strength. It's very transparent. So it's it's easy to overpower. Yeah. And by the way, the Prussian blue we make, there's no filler in it, and so it's it's very intense. So a lot of other companies put fillers. And, and we don't say that in a uh, deprecating way because uh, they put fillers because it's 
it's it's very difficult to control at full strength. Kind of like a phthalo blue. Yes. Again, nobody in, uh, in the world, any company put thalo uh, green or blue in the, in the full strength. It's, uh, it will be crazy because you, it's impossible to work with that. Uh, since we do have this policy in our company, we don't put any additives or fillers. So then we put Prussian blue um, uh, in full strength. So then just be careful. It's, uh, <laughs> it's very powerful one. Henry asks if we're going to ever produce a business vanadate yellow. And George was thinking about this, that, and uh, I probably we are, we are actually, on Yeah, we're actually uh, looking at and have been uh, testing some uh, modern synthetics like a business vanadate yellow and some 19th century uh, yellows. Um, so, besides the ones that we have. So, yeah, I think. Um, look for this um you know in, Next year. in the near future yeah so lemon uh, ochre italian yellow earth and pale and vicenza uh, making with prussian blue making very aqua blue green color uh very beautiful but uh what interesting what i found was if you will do ultramarine mix uh, ultramarine blue with yellow ochre pale or even better with Vicenza Earth, you basically can fake your lazurite. <laughs> so it was very similar in color. And I will show you in swatches. It's uh, very apparent there. And so because it's uh, it's ki kind of mudding up a little bit of uh, ultramarine. It's yeah, it's it's, but, it, it's a great way to control it, yeah, because it can yeah. be very garish. Yeah. And so the bigger particles of the yellow ochres are making that even more interesting. So it's um, it's not like you're mixing with um, it was white. It's so different. And um, yes, so it's um, very interesting. So I, I found spe specifically Vicenza Earth and Ultramarine uh, Blue together look like uh, can be look like Ultramarine and uh, Lajurite. Ku, welcome Ku. Hi Ku. Um, yeah, you're right. Any yellow ochre applied thinly uh, will behave transparently. That's due to the accessory minerals. So which are genuinely transparent? Well, I, I would say, I'm not sure what genuinely would be. A lim um, lemon ochre would be. But in either oil or, well, obviously an egg yolk and oil is going to be different because of the refractive index of the oil paint. But uh, the Vicenza is going to be fairly transparent. But Vicenza, I can, uh, Ku Vicenza doesn't look yellow in, uh, yeah, in yeah. Uh, oil of the watercolor or the uh, egg tempera. That's for sure. It's very dirty, um, dirty color. So I, uh, I mean, dirty meaning like it's not yellow, not red, not. Yeah. Uh, it's it doesn't nothing. have high chroma. Yeah. yeah. So I, I still would think then probably uh, Italian yellow earth or lemon ochre are the most transparent, but Italian yellow earth is uh, on greenish side. So if, if something, you know, you don't want that. So the lemon ochre would be your choice. Yeah, the lemon ochre in very thin applications will will be more lemony yellow. Yeah, certainly. Notice how the blue almost yeah. does nothing to nothing. Yeah. the Mars yellow. You know, even I, the, the Prussian added, blue. Yeah, and I added already half. So and it's not even. Yeah. I've... So Ku, when I say accessory minerals, that uh, of course uh, ochre. Ochres get their color from iron oxide, but because the iron oxide is in various uh, proportions in the, in the actual mineral, um, the accessory minerals, which are clay, quartz, gypsum, anything that's naturally found in with the ochres, uh, because they have low refractive index, also give it a more transparent feel. But in egg tempera, that's gonna be very different because egg tempera, the refractive indexes depend on the surrounding medium, which is gonna be very different in egg tempera rather than oil. Look at this range of colors. It's, uh, oops, okay, it's gone now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, okay, so we will um, look later again. And so I- so You, can, you I, can show some of the samples. Yes. We have some swatches yes. on that, so we can yes. talk about that. So. Um, 
So uh, again, more we make in this uh, sessions, more we excited. And so now we have idea to, uh, we already were talking about long time about Armenian, uh, our Armenian colors. And we now get in another uh, four different colors. So um, look like or January and February, we will have uh, this AMA session about Armenian colors, which is very exciting. And uh, if you think that's what you saw today is um, um, exciting and interesting. So wait until that one. So uh, I would like to show you swatches. And so then at least we can kind of like go back and um, uh, to, to video and what, what was mixed and so by the way I can tell you this the drying time uh, all of that um, all including Mars was uh, probably some of them overnight and uh, some of them in two days where, where all of them were dried so just uh, because it's one of the uh, questions usually our uh, artist ask how long it dries and so just because it's natural colors and so it's uh, quite big particles on some of them not much oil so therefore so George you can uh, switch us to, to different camera okay here oh eek that's look very orangey it's um is there anything we can change or it's that's how it is George it will be okay I've been I've been Playing with that somewhat to get that a little okay. bit less. Ooh, it's, no, it's even worse, I think. So, okay. Um, nope. Nope. Okay. Okay. So, put back, I guess, <laughs> where we were. <laughs> okay. Um, not the greatest, uh, I guess, the uh, uh, explanation, but uh, at least let's see the value. So, you can see then this is full, it's blue rich yellow ochre. And so you can see then um, with lead white and um, and that's with titanium. And again, here's blue rich yellow ochre and you can see how that with ultramarine and that's with Prussian and we actually, you can see then it's true green uh, here. So then uh, that's the blue rich yellow ochre. Uh, is there any questions? So then I will just, um, uh, we will go uh, just uh, somebody asked about the Armenian yellow earths. We yes. will show that in a different video. Yes, we, absolutely. We, because what we you've have, seen are yes. Italian and French uh, yellow, yellow yes. earth colors. Yes, Armenians will be. Um, uh, we will make special program for Armenians because that's uh, we already. We by now we have ten colors and we will have another four. Uh, probably by next couple months, and so that would be exciting. So anyway back to uh to our session today it's lemon ochre and uh if i would show <clears throat> you i will try to to show you see how uh blue rich yellow ochre is much more glossy and remember we already covered that for several particle sessions size. particle size mm -hmm. is much smaller so therefore uh it, that it first of all it will take much more oil uh, of course but just because of the particles uh, smaller and so then it's it can you tell which which, uh, which ones you have in your hands this is blue rich yellow ochre and you can see then it's uh, on glossy and this is much more you see how suddenly here is all matte and here's just because uh, we had titanium so it's a little bit more glossier but then but look that i will show you this you see how matte matte it is so again like compared what, what, to what everybody needs to understand is gloss matte pre predominantly is controlled by particle size of the paint so particle size of the pigment can, to a large effect in oil colors especially will control the matte or gloss larger particles more matte small particles more glossy so that was lemon okay so now we are going to Italian uh, yellow earth. One of that, what we absolutely want you to pay attention and uh, it's beautiful color. Again, uh, probably uh, same particle size, very large. So therefore it will be uh, a little bit more matte. So, um, and uh, you can see again, uh, tinting stray, uh, strings, very transparent. It's very transparent, but more greenish than uh, any, uh, any other yellows. And so then, and you can see how uh, olive 
color make makes uh, with um, ultramarine okay so and uh, you can see even scratches here I uh, I don't know if it's visible here yeah you can see it. yeah so that's due to the particle size mm -hmm. because obviously Prussian blue is uh, has very small, very small particles mm -hmm. it's not uh, not indication here okay here's yellow ochre light and uh, so you see how more and more transparent we are coming becoming and so but yellow ochre light is very reddish one and uh, it's almost too true right now I see on screen and and what uh, in my hand and so look at that color it's with ultramarine and uh, it's um, it's very interesting so how you can just tune down your uh, ultramarine and not exactly make a lingerie but it's uh, yellow ochre light yellow ochre light mm -hmm. and um, so here our yellow ochre pale look at the transparency and you wow. can see then even with uh, with lead white you still see uh, tra how transparent it is of course uh, titanium already uh, overpowering and so therefore of course you can see then it's a uh, very opaque here but it's basically like if you need to um, just kind of kill your um, very bright white so that's the way to do this with uh, yellow ochre pale and that's what I was talking about lingerie so you can see that again you see how transparent you can um, the transparency you can see right here so and, uh, and look how interesting um, aqua green with Prussian blue mm -hmm. and um, and that's what we change the earth so I, um, I, I mean want to be honest we we uh, we did have a couple customers who were excited they read somewhere they heard some somewhere about which in the earth they bought it and they were uh, call, call they called me and so I was like what is this that's how it's look like when it's dry so and you can see it's uh it's just um you know changing the the whites nothing else there's nothing yellow about this um so and that's what it it does to the 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 blues and uh i mean i mean of course i probably would figure out if if somebody will give me swatch of flagellite and uh, and that one of course i will figure out which one is which but uh very very similar very interesting that was a discovery for me actually so i um it looks more grayish here though you know? yeah mm -hmm. you know? yeah but again you can actually um, modulate look that, at, yeah. yeah so that's um uh that's italian yellow uh, it's italian dark ochre and uh you can see how red it is and it's um uh probably uh you know uh what is it 16 17 years ago we should probably put that in orange line but um, nevertheless, it's in our yellows. It's and, predominantly uh, a gatite, which is uh, and, a yellow um, ochre, yeah. Very pink. You can't see here, but it's just absolutely pink here. So that's with, uh, with uh, titanium. And um, so that's, that's how it's look with our blues. And um, again, uh, big, big particles, I can tell you right now. So, and um, almost all of them except Blue Ridge, Yellow Ochre, and that's our Mars. And you can see, uh, of course, yeah, you, uh, the colors I uh, not right. They're much more green, uh, greenish in life. So where uh, here is much more reddish, but uh, I can say, I can tell you that it's like almost uh, olivey uh, yellow. And so, and, um, Here's 50-50 with titanium, and you see no uh, no changes in uh, not much changes in color. Very powerful, um, very different from natural colors you can see. And so, and here's probably like 75% of titanium and uh, uh, 25 of the uh, yellow, uh, Mars yellow. And um, so, just to see the, the com comparison and. Uh, and yep here's uh definitely true green right here so okay one of the questions yes. is uh 
From Constance, which one of these yellow earth is most glossy? Blue rich yellow ochre, if you're talking about um, uh, natural colors. Yeah. I'm not talking about Mars right, yellow. Right, that's the yellow so, earth yes. that we showed, yeah. 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 So, so blue rich, the, the most glossy. And one. again, that's because of the particle, particle size. size. Small has the smallest particle size. It's micronized pigment, so very small as a result of that. Another question we have is, um, uh, I'll just put that in the broadcast. Why is transparent Mars yellow often said to be less permanent than plain Mars yellow or yellow ochre? It isn't. Uh, no, it is it not. I, it's I all don't know iron who... oxides. Yes. I, I think that's a misinformation. Um, I intentionally didn't touch Mars, uh, uh, transparent Mars yellow, uh, transparent iron oxides. yellow oxide. Yeah. Yes. And so because we do have two of them. Uh, and it's so funny when you look from the tube, yellow doesn't look like yellow and uh, transparent red iron oxide doesn't look like red. It's a uh, it's so weird situation. But um, when you mix with whites or when you go trans when you apply it or, thinly. Yes, yeah, so very, very thinly. So then then you can see then this is red, this is yellow. And so that's why. Um, I uh, I didn't touch this. I I, I didn't bring that uh, to that session because it it will be from way over scopes. This it's completely different uh, range of them. But yeah, uh, it's as permanent as uh, any of uh, um, yellow ochres, or, natural or, ones. Yeah. So why do manufacturers use the term light next to a color? Um, it's it's because we don't want to give it. You know, it, it, it varies with each manufacturer. Some use pale, some use light, and so forth. But it's just, it's just a naming convention. There's no significance to it. Uh, we started, again, we started with, um, uh, with pigments. And we had, George mentioned, we probably don't have 20 of the uh, pigments, but we do have a lot of yellow ochres. And so um, the idea was, again, we don't, usually we don't give fancy schmancy names we usually give in from the places where it's um, digged or uh, or the mineral itself and um, uh, just happened then we had that many on of same range that's why it doesn't make any sense to make all of them in the range of oils but it's more interesting like in um, uh, egg tempera or on watercolors. On watercolors we have more like we have another uh, beautiful color. It's called ambrosia. And, uh, but in uh, oils it didn't make any sense for us to repeat almost exactly identical to other colors. So that's why we gave different like yellow curl light. Although you see then it's not as light uh, as in oil in the pigment. Absolutely. Yeah, and going back to the issue of uh, permanence. Yes. Um, so uh, Windsor Newton seems to grade transparent A rather than AA. You're going to have to really ask Windsor Newton why they do that, because that's not following uh, that grading system, by the way, doesn't follow any light fastness standard. Uh, especially the ASTM light fastness standard for oil paint, which is ASTM D4302. So you'll have to ask them what they mean by that, because Remember... we're not aware of any differences in, in terms yeah. of light fastness. Now, there may be some other issue they're looking at, and so it, that needs to be Remember a one thing. So, uh, again, very proudly we uh, talk about and for in our line of colors we always put one single pigment color so uh, except of course um, our historical some of our historical whites and uh, historical five historical hues but other than that it's always single pigment when you look on Windsor and Newton so look on the back of the tube maybe it's another color uh, pigment there so which makes suddenly different between A and AA because uh, as the iron oxide doesn't matter if it's natural or it's synthetic it's absolutely permanent this is this is why we are uh, preaching always about natural colors because they are most stable colors they are millions of years in the earth and so they probably will survive another millions on your palette so that's uh, and uh, synthetic um, iron oxide as good 
as natural. Do you have to worry about putting these faster drying ochre colors on top of a slower drying oil color? You probably should think about that. That's true for and any it's anything. Absolutely, yes. actually. You know, yeah. So any if, oil paint. Yeah, yeah, that structure is very important, and so and that's why we we have our painting best practices, and we uh, we always talking about how to safely ap apply the colors, and so you definitely need to think about drying time different pigments and different oils yes yeah. so but usually usually so like um, uh, yellow ochres don't you know uh, exist alone and so you jo don't just put them you know so suddenly and uh, I mean not not usually so let's just but uh, even if you mix with uh, 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 lead white it's um, you know it's different um, uh, time of drying with titanium, by the way, uh, we, uh, I show you with titanium, which titanium dries very slow. With um, iron oxide, it dried the, the same time, and uh, two days was the most. So they ask, um, um, Constance asks, thanks Constance for loving our products. Um, Mars yellow dries really fast, that's true. And how can I extend drying time without compromising the film? The one thing you can do, of course, you can uh, mix with walnut oil. That's yeah. that's one you know uh, safe way to do that, and so uh, it it will not prolong much, but it will uh, will slow down drying time enough for you to uh, to paint, you know, next day and maybe day after that. And uh, going back to that issue. Um, in regards to the transparent yellow iron oxide yes. permanence and so forth. Keep in mind uh, 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 that uh, iron oxides are the most permanent and compatible pigments known to humans at this point in time. And so whether it's transparent or a Mars synthetic Mars yellow or an iron uh, in a yellow ochre, a natural earth, it's going to be very compatible. There, there has shows very few incom incompatibilities with other pigments and, and light fast. And the difference between a transparent yellow iron oxide and a Mars yellow, which is a lot, is just the particle size. So the smaller the particle, as the particle gets to this small size, it becomes more transparent. Yeah. Um, and Here's another question uh, from Jody. Yes. Some yellow ochres and raw siennas look very similar, especially in watercolor. I'm wondering what's the primary differences of the two? And raw siennas. Between uh, raw siennas and yellow ochres. They uh, are very similar. The, uh, no, no. So first of all, I can tell terms, you this. Uh, uh, raw siennas are, again, are we talking if, in if we are talking about our company or somebody else? Just in general, probably. In general, so mm -hmm. uh, still, Rosiennas are much more powerful. So uh, the, where they the, can be, the, yeah. So and uh, in I guess I'm talking about our colors. And yeah. So uh, you need to remember if we are talking about Rosienna and let's say uh, Windsor and Newton, there is nothing about Rosienna there. It's Sienna. I mean, it's the iron oxide pretend like raw sienna. Therefore, it will be uh, yellow iron oxide mixed with something else to pretend. So there, uh, uh, so it still will be much more powerful. And so I, I was just yesterday was playing with um, with our yellow ochres because we found this, uh, you know, the range of them, and they uh, I found. And they all look the same for me in the uh, uh, pens, but then I, when I, I started to uh, play with them, every each of them had the different um, uh, cuts. So some of them were greenish, some reddish, and so. But Sienna's, even our Sienna, which is natural, it's still much more powerful than yellow ochre. Yeah, keep in mind that the the term Sienna is is somewhat arbitrary. Mm -hmm. um, and used by different manufacturers in different ways. Like Tanya mentioned, um, very importantly, you have to understand is that what you see as ochres and siennas in other product lines 
actually, like Tanya mentioned, may actually be synthetics. So look at the back of the label and you'll see it should, if it's natural, it'll be a PY43. Now, the one, how we distinguish Sienna's from ochres is that Sienna's typically have a little bit of manganese oxide, which are alters the color typically, but that's, you know, that's, uh, and that's a kind of a general rule of thumb, but every manufacturer is gonna deal with that a little bit differently. Um, let me add another, uh, let me see, another question here. Which of the yellow earths feel longest on your brush? That's a good question. Uh, Blue Ditch Yellow Ochre. That's the one, and I, uh, I'm sorry, I forget, uh, Henry, I forget to, to mention that when I started, that, that when you will, if you will have time to look back, when you will look the first uh, slide where we talk, like, you know, where I uh, put in the pilot knife, and that was very long. So, and it just due to um, different behavior of the particle uh, to the oil. And um, yeah, it's the longest one. Uh, lemon ochre, probably the shortest one. Henry also asked, uh, uh, generalize how the clay content affects handling. It makes uh, much more short, uh, short. Mm -hmm. so, like in um, and obviously transparent, but short. Yeah. And um, Dan Freed, this is off topic. He asked about how to make a, a mid value neutral gray um, and someone else suggested, which I, I think is, is probably just as good. Uh, take a, an acrylic white and black and mix a gray. Yeah, put it on the underside of the palette. So that's a good idea. Yeah. And um, uh, any other questions? Looks like we have answered most everybody, I hope. Uh, good. And so. do you have anything else to show our guests? Uh, no, we're good. Okay. So uh, <laughs> we, uh, we made that program very short and sweet and I'm, I'm happy. So, um, our next AMA will be on January 19th. Uh, we still will announce the topic of that. Um, and um, so, but if we don't have any questions, again, uh, this was Tatiana Zaitseva, I forgot to mention. And that's, we are in natural pigments today. And uh, happy holidays. Oh, I got one, one point here, which we, we knew would be brought up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> chance. Okay, just... Pam, you have special gift from me. So uh, <laughs> next time you uh, order, I uh, just remind me. I will send you tube of uh, uh, which ends the earth. It's um, it it is true. She just it's... bought it, but so, okay. So, so I will give you something else. <laughs> so Pam, the reason why we listed on the website as a PW nineteen because that's uh, that's a clay. That's the PW19 is the uh, color index number for clay. That is the main constituent in that mineral. But there's a, but the actual coloring part of it is a PY43, which is an iron oxide. Which so, is not, uh, it's so and that's small why we, amount. We, and uh, so we it, just put in that program specifically yeah. with yellows because it's in our yellow line. But yes, it's PW19, and it's uh, it was not George's mistakes. We 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 were talking about how do we approach that, and so. But thank you. So I we always love uh, customers who absolutely understand what they're talking, and so it's great. And so, um, yeah, and, and and keep in mind that you know nature doesn't follow neat categories, so. We're trying to give it some kind of category so we can understand it, like we call it uh, a yellow earth or a yellow ochre. Technically, Vicenza is not a yellow ochre. It's actually clay with a little bit of iron, yellow iron oxide in it. So, so how do you do that? So it's, so, you know, we, we, we just decided to classify it as a yellow, uh, yellow earth, but technically we, not a yellow. Ochre, yes. Though. So, but again, uh, on the tube, you're absolutely right. We put, uh, everything, uh, the, uh, index, what is, must be to that. The, the main that. constituent yes. in the tube, but we wanted to talk yeah. about the colorant, yeah. that, what, what actually gives it this particular color, which is, which is really important here. So are we 
finished now? I think we are. I think okay. we've got everything. Okay, so... Well, thanks, uh, Pam, happy... for liking it. And, uh... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> happy Black Water Tiger Year. New Year look like will be looking very nice. So according to Eastern calendar and so then... I uh, I wish you the best and uh, see you next year. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Being with us, being our customers, being being our friends. And, Don't forget uh, our promotion. And uh, yes, I thought you already mentioned. I will Let's mention, mention again. It again. So it's mm -hmm. special deal for next uh, week. For this week, you, for, starting yes, today. Starting today to until next uh, uh, Wednesday. So you buy any two yellow ochres what we uh, talked today and you will get a free uh, Italian yellow earth tube uh, automatically so just uh, just special for, for you free. who yeah. were watching today and uh, again thank you very much happy new year happy holidays happy See you new next year, year.